request uh, the second speaker, uh, Professor Jihan, uh, you know, to be available. And before he commences his lecture, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Jihan. Uh, Professor Jihan is a Glenn L. Parker Professor of Geotechnical Engineering in Civil Environment and Architecture Engineering Department of University of Kansas. He received his PhD degree in civil engineering from Georgia Tech in 1997. He is an author of the book Principles and the Practice of Ground Improvement and has published more than 400 journal and conference papers. He is an AAC Geo Institute Board Governor, Council Member of the International at Geocentric Society, the current chair of AC Geo Institute Soil Improvement Committee, the current chair of TRB Transportation Networks Committee. He serves as an associate editor of for the AC General of Geotechnical and Geomatical Engineering and AC General of Materials and uh, handing and the editor for TRR Transportation Research Record. He has given more than 200 keynote invited lectures, short courses around the world, and uh, he, he gave a lecture uh, in the uh, uh, 20, uh, he's, uh, in the 21st annual job F Sowers Symposium in Atlanta in 2018 and um, uh, 18th UK IGS lecture in London in 2018, a keynote lecture at the Geo Americas in 18, uh, you know, in the Geo Americas Central Conference in 2020. He received numerous awards and uh, I think some of them are Sankshar Prakash Prize for Excellence in Practice of Geotechnical Engineering, 2004. International Geosynthetics Award and ACAC Award, uh, uh, Martin Clap Foundation Engineering Award, and the AC Cancer City Section Engineer of the Year Award. So, Professor Jehan, it's your. Okay. Um, thank you, Professor Babu, for your kind introduction. And I also like to thank the Professor Randy for the invitation to this uh, interesting and important um, workshop. So my topic will be focused on the behavior of ladder load piles and the scale condition at the bridge. So my presentation condition will be very different from the previous presentation. So my application basically is bridge foundations. So our uh, study mostly focus on before and after scale. So I will not talk about the process of scale. So in this presentation, I will start with the introduction give you a very brief uh, introduction about the problems we are facing. And then I will focus on the lateral behavior of single pies under scale conditions. Then we'll talk about three different uh, issues here. One is the effects of the scale hole dimensions. Uh, second one is the effects of the stress history changes, how that affect the load uh, behavior of uh, single piles. And then how do we address then after I finish this, then I'll talk about the lateral behavior of pi groups. Um, after finish this, then basically address one real problem. How do we analyze the lateral behavior of pi support bridges? At the end, there are a few uh, remark, uh, concluded remarks. So, but let's start with introduction. And uh, regarding the bridge scour, uh, basically is the process of the erosion or removal of a stripped uh, bed or bent uh, materials from bridge foundation due to flowing water. Uh, there are basically th three different kinds of scours in the, in the bridge. The first one basically the general scour. Uh, I don't know what's going on. There's something going on with uh, uh, this pen here. Uh, okay, is it went away? Okay, the, the second situation uh, basically uh, is a general scour, also the federal highway, also defined as a long term degradation, basically, the average removal of the material. Uh, the second type of scour, basically, contraction scour due to there's a, an object in the middle of the river that created the, uh, the flow rate change and the flow direction change that will basically uh, increase the soil cap capacity, remove the soil around the uh, piers, high cap piles. Uh, the last basically is a local scour, mostly happen around the pile foundations. So, but that's where be the one I will be talk about today mostly regarding the bridge foundation scour. 
But in terms of terminology, and uh, we have three different situations. One basically called global scour. Uh, let's say if we remove the soil uh, uniformly around the piles. This is kind of idea situation. You completely remove the soil and then how they affect the pile capacity, uh, the deflection of pile, subject the vertical, the ladder load. Now my presentation will focus on ladder load only, not dealing with the vertical load. But this is also conservative approach when people design uh, to consider scour effect. The second one, basically the locals around the single piles. But here we're dealing with different situation. We deal with scour depth, and then scour width at the bottom, scour width on the top, and also scour slope. But those kind of things I will talk about today. We did some research. We have a pie groups, and then the situation will become a little bit complicated. There's really no a unified definition about how do we're dealing with the different kind of scour. So I give the name, uh, this scour, the, the, the big scour I call the group local scour. And then you may have some uh, small scour around the pile that I call the pie local scour. Now for most case, when the pie spacing getting closer, then you may not see the pie scour. Only if the pie spacing getting larger, then you may see the local scour basically similar to the single pile. Then here basically show you some picture of the real scour cause the bridge foundation, explosion, uh, complete explode and the kind of failure. And uh, here I also want to point out uh, debris sometimes will cause a problem because that will uh, generally uh, reduce the water flow and generate horizontal load basically to push the bridge fail. Now there are also the situation due to the uh, scour and the cause of the vertical sediment situation. That will be my focus. Uh, my focus will be on the lateral uh, behavior. So, but we investigate the uh, collect the 36 bridges failures. We investigate what the most common failure mode we found the lateral failure is the most common. It's about 40% over 100% of the failures. But that was the justification why we want to focus on lateral behavior of pi underscore condition. But in terms of pi foundation subject the ladder load, but this is a pi group situation. As you can see, we may have a scout original ground line here. We scale down and the, you will lose the support and also subject the ladder load. The, the ladder load will cause the pile to deform. But how do we analyze this? Typically, we use this kind of model. This is a simple model. Basically, this is a pile, and soil model as a soil spring. But if the pile starts to deform, the basically there's deformation Y, and then the soil will start to react. That is a P. But we can plot the PY curve as what we show here at the different elevations. But as you can see, Typically at the lower elevation, the PY curve is softer. The, at the depth, the deep uh, elevation, uh, the PY curve will be stiffer because of the overburden stress, the soil stiffer spot. So this is the way how do we basically uh, describe or model the soil and the pile interaction. So there are two famous theories of methods available to analyze this kind of situation for clay is the metlock method, uh, for sand, the Reese method. Okay, those two methods I will talk up a little bit later on when we talk about how do we consider skull hole effect. So for now, let's move on to the lateral behavior of a single pile under skull condition. We have done a few things here, a list of stuff here. One, to investigate the effect of skull hole dimensions use the physical model test, basically the reduced scale model, and then use numerical analysis method to expand the physical model test, and then develop a simplified method for people to use, okay? But this is the one thing we try to consider what the effect of skull hole dimension. The another thing we also find very important is the effect of stress history change. 
because of the removal of the soil, just like an unloading situation. The, the soil may change from normally conservative soil to uh, over conservative soil. But that also affects the behavior of the soil response. The, for most cases, you really have both together. The, how do we do not consider the combined effect in the real design? The, we start with the physical model test. The, this is a physical model. The, we started to investigate the global scale. Basically, I said, you know, all the soil remove uniformly. And uh, this is the initial result score depth. And then a little bit, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and until 0 0.5. Then we measure the load deflection. From there, we can determine the lateral capacity. I define the lateral capacity ratio as the capacity with scale depth divided by the one without scale. Okay, I got the measure data. Then we compare with the Broom's uh, solution. Okay, there's a design chart. And a blue solution basically consider eccentricity. Okay. Then you basically change the eccentricity to simulate the score depth and they basically match very well. Okay, match very well. But in other words, if we just design for global scale, we can use the current method developed by uh, Brooms to calculate the capacity of the pile subject ladder load. Now we also put the strain gauge around the piles to measure the bending moment. They were here basically show you the bending moment. And uh, from here, as you can see, this is the increase the scale depth. And when you increase the stock scale depth, actually the bending on the pile getting smaller. The reason because the soil will not resist the pile movement. Okay. And the maximal moment go from the top to down, of course, because if you excavate to this point, there's no resistance. All the things will be resist the bottom. This is the way how that change, okay? But from the physical model test, even though this is a reduced scale, we can observe some phenomenon and useful for us to do more research in the future. But we also investigate the other facts, basically scale slope, like this one, this is a flat 15 degree, this is 30 degree. Here, basically show you some model, as you can see here, that's the way how we generally just scale a hole, okay? We also have the bottom width. This is the bottom width equal to zero. We also have the bottom width and you keep increase. And then if the, everything removed, that becomes the global scale, okay? That we can investigate the scale width. At the same time, we of course investigate the scale depth as well. But all those things, basically, we are investigating regarding scale hole dimensions. Then we show you some results here. Okay, this is one. How do we apply load? Actually, we just use a pulley and put the weight there, and then we measure displacement of the pile. Okay, so from here, first thing, we fix the scale depth, but change the slope of the scale, and we we find out this is a zero uh, uh, scale. What, what that means is zero degree, zero degree basis is a global scale, completely remove our soil. Then if I, 15 degree, 30 degree, it's just not, not much different. The, by increase the degree, you increase the response of soil. The reason, because you increase the, the slope, but basically you add some kind of surcharge on uh, around the edge of the pile. This is why I increase the capacity. The, as you can see from here, of course, if you uh, uh, increase the scale depth or reduce the capacity, but at the same time, if you increase the slope angle and the capacity actually will be increased, okay? So that is a situation where we have a bottom uh, width equal to zero. Okay, now let's take a look at other phenomena, basically scale width. So we start with the scale width equal to zero and they keep increase and increase, then we, we fix the slope angle, okay? But at the same time now, the, for this case, we only, uh, we keep the also scope depth the same, only change the width. The from here, as you can see, if the width, you know, uh, increase from zero, zero just like this situation. If uh, 667 millimeters is a complete remove of the material. Okay, the best you can see here, when you uh, increase the width, basically reduce the capacity or increase the deformation. 
okay? Then also from here, you can see that as well, okay? And basically increase the width, the, uh, the capacity will be decreased uh, because you basically remove the surcharge around the pile. But we also did the cycle loading as well. Uh, basically, we just pull uh, the, the pie in this way and pull the pie uh, the another way. I tried to see how the pie will respond. The way it fixed the, the bottom scour width, fixed the, uh, the top scour, and uh, but we, we changed the two slope. The, this one is a small slope, basically flat. The, this is a 30 degree slope. Now, one thing I need to point out, the repeated load capacity is equal to optimal load capacity divided by two. The, but for the one, as I, I point out, with 30 degree uh, slope, actually the capacity will be larger. If larger divided by two, of course, applied load will be larger. This is why 30 degree one, the deformation larger than the zero degree, the, the force applied for this was higher. But one phenomenon is very interesting. As you can see at the beginning, uh, this deformation is larger, getting smaller, smaller, smaller. And that, in other words, really the soil is densified during this repeat loading process, okay? Now, the, the things we are dealing with here is dry sand, okay? Now, as the previous uh, presentation show, that if we have a cycle loading, you may have a liquefaction. That, but that was not investigated in our study. Now let's move on to talk about numerical analysis. We use the FLAC 3D uh, finite difference uh, software. And this is the basic cone shape uh, scour. And then we basically investigate all the factors as I mentioned early on, uh, mentioned the bottom width uh, scour, the scour depth, the scour slope. But this time now we change the soil from sand to clay and then investigate all those uh, factors. I will show you some results because of time, I cannot show you all the results, but uh, basically I try to make some comparison. Um, now, unfortunately, we, we use two different uh, dimension of the, uh, of the pile diameter for clay is 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.6. I haven't really uh, changed this to dimension lists. It make it a little bit difficult to compare, but I already scaled that, okay? I scaled, you see, this is 300, this is 150. But from here, as you can see, and the sand, okay, actually has a more effect by the skull depth than the clay in terms of the variation, okay? The as you can see, skull depth zero to eight Ds, you have a wide range of change, this have a little bit less change, okay? The way you will see this kind of trend laid down for other facts as well, and then I will conclude why is this is the case, okay? The pile in the sand is more sensitive to skull depth effect. Now let's take a look at the PY curve, as I mentioned earlier on, okay? From here, PY curve, basically P is the soil resistant. Uh, y is the uh, basic deformation or displacement. The we fixed at the same depth, okay, uh, from the soil, from the bottom of the scour. That you, again, you see the same uh, variation because the scour much more than the clay, okay? Again, pi in sand is more sensitive to scale depth uh, effects. Then now we change it to the bending moment, okay? For the bending moment, we find out it's a little bit different situation. Actually, this, this depth uh, limitation, uh, now I haven't scaled again, the actually is a little bit smaller depth in sand, but larger depth in the clay. The, the, again, the reason because of sand, we increase depth, the stiffness will increase. For clay, the modulus increase is not much uh, as the sand, okay? But that is the reason why you, if you remove the soil, you release the stress, and then you basically re reduce the modulus of soil to resist uh, the pile ladder deformation. But if we look the slope, okay? The, uh, this, I'm sorry, this is the width, the uh, skull width. But again, we see the more effect uh, in terms of the skull width, because if you uh, increase the skull width, basically you kind of remove the surcharge, okay? The for sand is more sensitive to overburn stress. But as we know for the more current theory, we have a cohesion plus normal stress, then tangent the feet. If you change the normal stress uh, for 
uh, friction angle uh, soil like sand will be very significant. But for clay, it's not very significant because friction angle almost goes to zero, okay? But this is the reason why for sand is more sensitive to scour, but clay is less sensitive to scour. Now, the, but here basically shows the slope, a slope, uh, skull slope angle change, which shows a similar situation here. As you can see from zero to 40 degree, we see some difference, but if for clay, a change from zero to uh, 40 degree to even 60 degree, and the change is not much. Now we didn't do 60 degree because that will exceed the friction angle of soil. That you will not be able to do for sand, but you can do for clay because of the cohesion. But again, show the pie in sand is more sensitive to scour uh, slope effect. Okay. But after we understand that, now we try to see whether we can develop some kind of simplified method to consider skull hole effect. But this is the basic model we, we proposed uh, several years ago. Basically for a PY curve, there's two different failure modes. One is called near surface failure. One is below surface failure. But you need to check both failure to make sure which one is a lower capacity. Okay. But this is the one basically include the, the skull hole, okay? But we don't have any solution for PY curve with skull hole, but we try to use a conventional PY curve look like it's on the right side, okay? But basically we solve the uh, equation based on the force equilibrium. See how much capacity, how much force you need to fail this wedge and how much equivalent this, the basically you can determine what the equivalent depths of the one without skull hole. If we know that, then we can use the current conventional method, like a risk for sand for to determine the PY curve. Okay. One thing I will point out for sand, as you can see, there's an angle here. Okay. But if we move to clay, you don't have the angle here because this is depend on the friction angle. Okay, but that is the key, basically the equivalent of force to determine the equivalent depth. But here basically shows the force uh, derived from this equation. And then from there, if we know the equivalent depth, we plug in those formula. Those formula came from the risk formula that we can calculate what is the pressure and then from that to determine what is the minimum pressure for the depth. And then we can calculate the PY curve. Uh, modified, consider skull hole, okay? Okay, it sounds like a very simple, but that's only simple if your K is, is a constant. But in reality, the PY curve is K, basically it's not a constant, it's non-linear. How do we do that? It's very difficult to do hand calculation. This is why we need to develop a, a software module to do that. Basically, the basic concept now, this is like a PY curve then we divide this into different segments. For each segment, you have a K, okay? The, that K is a con, kind of constant with this segment and the constant with this segment. Of course, if you divide to more segments, basically you will fit the curve perfectly, okay? The, but that only can be done through the software. The, but this is why we develop a software and to do this the software basically to do the nonlinear uh, conversion of that. Okay, but if we calculate the thickness, then we can use other software like structure software to structure analysis. I will show you this later on um, about this software, but at least we can show how they compare with our numerical results. Yeah. But here, basically, we make a comparison. I will show you some results from Flex 3D, and then the compare with the SSM, basically, this is a simplified soil model. And that for different kinds of situation, basically very well, okay? To verify uh, the, the, uh, the simplified method uh, is pretty good one, all right? Now, now move on the clay, as I mentioned. For clay, because the friction angle equal to zero, then you don't have that angle here, okay? Just like this. Then we can use the same approach. Now the formula will be different, okay? The, now we use the Matlock method, but the concept is the same. We use the same force to equip Equivalent, what is the depth? Then use this one to original metal rock solution to 
de uh, to determine the PY curve. Okay, there were all those things that already published in the paper. There were, I show some of those here. There were, we also make a comparison uh, between the numerical analysis results and uh, the simplified soil modules module, and uh, they match pretty well with that. Okay, but there is one issue that all the things that we have done so far without consider cause uh, uh, stress history effect. Okay, but as we know, the soil has a memory. The, if the soil original at this location, the, this point already subject to stress gamma Z uh, initial. Okay, the, if this soil is removed, the, the, the basically the yield stress or pre consolidation stress still is this one, but now current stress is lower. The, basically, we change it from the normal consolidated soil to over consolidated soil. That will change the behavior of the soil and also will change the property. Of it. But that's what we try to consider for two different kinds of soils. For sand, that may change the friction angle, change the union weight. As we know, if the, you remove the soil, the soil will start to rebound, will reduce the union weight a little bit. May also affect the modular subgrade reaction, okay? That is the K value. We, we talk about spring, stiffness. Uh, for clay, we're dealing with Andre stress strength and it may change the unit weight or may also change the modular subgrade reaction, okay? So let's take a look. The, the concept, basically we use uh, similar like a chem clay concept. The, you have the stress initially here and if you remove the soil, you have a rebound line and you come to here, right? And then we try to see how that affect the friction angle. So this is the one formula Okay, it's, it's a very famous formula. And uh, uh, Bowden uh, proposed the formula, basically depend on the uh, relative density and also depend on the mean stress, okay? But here now, if you remove the soil, you will change the mean stress and then you also will change the relative density. Then you will change your fresh angle, okay? And another thing, this is dealing with the unit weight. If you change your relative density, the way you change your unit weight. Let's, let's see how do we do that. The, uh, here first, it's very simple. You have an initial stress, subtract how much you remove, they plug in here, you will change that. And also we change the OCR as we talk about, right? And the, the density also we're plugging in here too. Now the, the, this formula, is, as you can see, this is going to reduce, suppose angle will get reduced, but you minus the small one, and the angle we're getting larger. Okay, that really depend on which one has, has the more effect on the friction angle. It's difficult to see from here, but I will give you an example later on to show you how they affect, okay? For unit weight, it's very simple. If you do not remove soil, the unit weight will get smaller. Okay, then how they affect the, the PY curve, those formula I present earlier on, the basically now you change the friction angle, change the unit weight, of course, you will change the P ultimate and it will change the PY curve. Another thing that will change the K value because now you have an OCR. If we assume initially is the OCR equal to one, now you have a high OCR, okay? Those are all the theories. It's, it's sometimes very confusing with theories. So let's take one simple example and see how they affect, okay? So we pick up one example uh, actually used by Reese, but we add the scour there in the Reese study, there was no scour, but the soil property from uh, his study, there were, let's assume like a three meter scour, then how they change uh, the property of the soil. So here basically show you, and uh, this is the initial friction angle, okay? And then this is after scour, the friction angle getting larger, okay? And when you get the deeper, the, the, the friction angle increase getting smaller and the unit weight, of course, there's a change as well. Okay, then you have an OCR here. Okay, it increase that. So basically, uh, after scour, the soil friction angle get the increase. Then how that affect the PY curve? Let's take a look here. The, if say we, this is the one before scour. Okay, those two lines are basically after scour. The, the one say unmodified means without consider uh, uh, stress history. The modified ones consider uh, uh, stress history. But I take the, like the, okay, the diffraction, like a 10 millimeter going up here 
and I can determine what is the resistance. For the case, this is basically unmodified uh, without stress history. After this one, the, basically you almost double the, the resistance, okay? The, how that change the deformation and the load curve. This is the load applied on the top. This is the deformation on the top. And those are the basic ones without scour, those are with scour. As you can see, uh, after you consider stress history, okay, and the, 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 this curve become more stiffer, basically becomes stronger and uh, also stiffer than the one without considered uh, stress history. But in other words, if we ignore the stress history effect, it is conservative, okay? But consider stress history result in high lateral soil resistance, thus reduce uh, lateral displacement. Now let's take a look at the clay, how that will, will happen. But we use a similar kind of concept, but now we have a CCC response. And we, we have a point here and then start to rebound to here. But this formula very similar things, but the important things are dealing with this one. Okay, the Andrea stress strength is correlated to normal stress and also correlate to OCR, okay, based on the larger solution for the Andrea stress strength. And then we use the Madlock theory we talked before to differentiate fair near surface, fair below surface, and we still can generate the optimum uh, capacity. Back in here, we can get it called PY curve. Okay, those are the theories. It's difficult to tell what kind of effect, okay? This is the cohesion here. This is a normal stress change, right? Because if you remove the soil, okay? Cohesion here. Take the, the case from uh, Metalock, okay? The, we, we use Metalock's soil properties, high properties, but we excavate down for 3.2 meters. See how that affects soil properties. From here, you can see this initial uh, unit weight that's effective like 10, basically you get a reduced little bit, okay? And this is the cohesion initially. And then you surprised to find out actually the cohesion get reduced, okay? Then you can see decrease the unit weight, it decrease the cohesion after remove, even though the OCR getting larger, but the actual cohesion getting smaller, okay? Right? How that affect the behavior, let's come back to PY curve. Okay, I take the same deformation. This time I take a 50 millimeter and this, this one is unmodified without consider st uh, stress history. Okay, and I got this uh, resistance. Then, then how about this one? This considers stress history and I got the less resistance. Okay, but if we come to the pi load deflection, this on the pi head, we, we find a similar situation here now. And basically, uh, the soil getting weaker and at the same load, this is considered stress history. This without considered stress history, okay? They were basically say considered stress history result in smaller lead soil resistance, those increase the lateral displacement, right? They but now if we ignore the stress history, it's not the same. The, for two different soil, the behavior is complete opposite, okay? Okay. The, the, I basically present those two separate, right? We, we consider one skull hole effect without consider stress history. When we talk about stress history, basically consider global scour is the horizontal removal of soil. But in reality, actually you have the removal of soil and also you have the skull hole effect. The, this is a kind of new study. Uh, Dr. Lin, uh, he was my former student and up here, went to uh, Victoria University, become faculty in Canada, and he continued his study with his student. There came out a new idea. I thought this very clever idea I want to share with you. But if we have a point that just use this middle point as example, that we suppose you can calculate the overall stress without the consider surcharge, okay? That basically is effective in with soil times the depth, right? That we know that overall stress. Then we treat this soil as a surcharge. And then of course you have additional load come from both sides, you come to here. Now this is a cone shape and I only show you the cross section. That if you derive it, then you come to this formula, okay? That you have the 
overburn stress from the one after scour, and then you have a surcharge from the soil remaining, right? Then we add it together, that will be the stress here, okay? The that stress, you can use for the stress history analysis, right? Because you, you, you have already stress, also gamma Z from here, but this is a new stress that you can do analysis. And also you can come out the equivalent. See, this is total stress divided by effect the unit weight. That is the equivalent depth, okay? The, this depth can be used for PI curve. So now we combine both effect in the same analysis, okay? The, you can use for stress history analysis, you can use for uh, basically PI curve analysis, consider skull hole effect. Okay. So basically, idea is like this, you equivalent eventually to horizontal, but the, now the Z is different. That Z is different from that Z, okay? Or from original Z. So that is the case, basically you do analysis, okay? So this analysis considers stress history and the skull hole effect together. Okay, how that really affects the results? So I use the, the results from a, Professor Liang from uh, Tongji University in China. And uh, he did uh, some kind of comparison. And uh, say one uh, case only consider stress history, okay? This is a skull depth increase. As you know, skull depth increase, the pi head diffraction increase. Uh, we already talked about this uh, for clay, okay? So if you can consider stress history, and as we talked about before for clay, if you consider stress history, it becomes softer. The, in other words, you have a more diffraction, okay? And then this one, the solid one here, is considered stress history and the skull hole effect. That the blue one basically only consider skull hole dimension, okay? The, from here, studies show the stress history actually is very important uh, for clay, but the skull hole effect is not that important as as we talked about earlier on, okay? So this is really consistent with what I discussed earlier on. Basically for clay, the overburn stress uh, effect, the skull effect is not that important, but stress history effect is important. And also we increase uh, the diffraction because of the uh, uh, reduce the reduction of the Andre stress strength. Okay, now let's move on to talk about the pi group effect, uh, lateral behavior of pi group. But uh, also I got uh, some uh, results from Dr. Ling and uh, uh, with his student. So now we have uh, like three by three piles and then we have the basic pi group. You need to get the equivalency. There's a little bit complicated procedure uh, depending on the, the flow rate. I will not get into detail about this. Then this is a group, pi group, and you have the Basically, it's a, a, a group lo local, uh, local scour, and you have the width, you have the slope, you have the depth, and this is like a single one. And they, they adopt a similar kind of approach, basically use the middle one as the calculation, okay? Now, this is a kind of assumption, or the, a major assumption or approximation, and I discussed with Dr. Green that they probably will keep improving, it, but basically concept is very similar then they derive the equation based on that. And they were, this is the overburn stress, the addition stress from this one. And then you basically equivalent at the, the depth again with the PY curve. But for group effect, there's more than that. Now for stress history, it's very similar like a single pile situation, but for the group effect, there's more than that. Okay, now let's talk about those things. The here basically show you the PY curve. Uh, the, I have three different situations here. Let me show you. First, we started with a single pile. The, we got the first curve here. The, that is a single pile without scour, okay? Then if we have the second one, single pile with scour, and then we need to modify a factor to reduce the resistance. The, that is basically a single pile with scour, okay? But that's not enough for pi group because if you have a pi group, there's also stress uh, over, overlap between each other. When you push this one, there were, you have a leading pile, you have a trade pile, you have a middle pile, and uh, there's another reduction, basically FM. 
that's a reduction of a group effect, okay? That we, you reduce to that point. But that will be the one eventually used in the analysis. The, the, that will be the, the uh, pi group and the score condition, okay? The, but they did some numeric analysis, tried to see how uh, the way they proposed were matched with the numerical results. The, but this is the model use the final element, okay? Without scour, this is a with scour, as you can see, here's a cone shape, and there, there is a zero a scour width from the edge, and then the scour depth, and then this is scour slope. And this is the one when they push laterally, try to see what the horizontal displacement, as you can see here, there's a change of the, the, the horizontal displacement. And this is after scour, and there, there's a stress of deformation uh, contour here. Okay, but they were able to um, basically predict the ladder load and the displacement and the pipe head. And as this is a pre scour the resistance is high, but when you increase the scour depth, <laughs> and then of course the, the load resistance gets smaller and smaller. And then the, the solid one is the numerical analysis, the dash one <laughs> basically proposed the method. Um, as you can see, I mean, uh, uh, generally uh, basically match with the results, but uh, I talked with the Dr. Rain and they, they tried to continue improve it. And that I didn't use their, all the results, but actually uh, overall, I think I matched the results with the numerical analysis with their simplified method. Now, let me move on to the last uh, segment. I think I'm also kind of running out of time. There was a letter of behavior of pi uh, support the bridges. This is the real situation. The, all the things I talk about, individual pile, pie group, the people say, how do I use for real project? Okay, the, but we did a, some study also published paper back in 2012. And uh, this is basically show you how do we uh, combine the soil model with the structure software model, okay? The, but on, on this left side, basically this is a before, a before sky. We now have a bridge uh, girders. Uh, then also we have the abutment support at two sides, and also we have a pier. And then the, all those the, like things basically spring. Okay, those are spring basically to simulate piles. The, after scour, what will happen? We just remove the spring, and that how we model in the structure software. But here, as you can see, there's a scour depth. Now let's see, here basically the model I just showed you, as I described to you before, we have the soil model and we input the information about the soil and the profile, and then we do the analysis, okay? Eventually, we, we, I showed you this before, that we can generate the, the K value, basically stiffness value, multi, okay? And then we apply back to this uh, structure software, and then they can run analysis for the whole structure, include the pile, pier, uh, bridge deck, and abutment. Okay, the, this is a close view. As you see, each one basically is a, is the steel, uh, uh, basically is a spring. Okay, let's take uh, again. We want to take take a real project as example. It's easy to illustrate. But this is a project in Kansas that we have the pile. And uh, for this case, the, 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 the pier is not a uniform cross section that we basically divide into the segment. And uh, those are the H pile we convert. And uh, it, basically what we analyze here is to simulate the score depth. Okay, we assume there's a score depth, how much? And also we consider stress history change by remove the soil, as we talk about. Now, in this analysis, we use the global scour. We didn't use the local scour for analysis. Okay. And the, another thing we didn't consider here, the pie group effect, okay? Now, we, we could consider that, but in that analysis at that time, we didn't consider, okay? Just make that clear. But for the loading condition, we, we consider self weight of a bridge and uh, consider wheel, uh, the wind pressure and consider water pressure uh, also with the breast, okay? We use the ASHTO standard 
And also we have the upstream and the downstream because the flow, we have two peers, right? But that also affects the, the performance of the, of the piles. The here basically show you, we, we did the analysis for two different kinds of soil, one's for sand, one's for clay. And uh, here basically show you, again, if you increase the skull depth, of course, the pie cap def deflection will, will increase. And then here now we also consider, as I mentioned, consider uh, soil uh, history effect. Uh, U means unmodified uh, without uh, stress history, M with stress history. Okay, but this is dealing with the clay situation. As you see, if for clay situation, if we consider stress history, the diffraction will get you more because it's getting weaker. Okay, then we also have the peer deck uh, 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 deformation, and we also uh, to analyze abutment. Then we find out the abutment actually carry a lot of load. Okay, basically the, the load eventually will transfer to the end support. Okay, then we also we calculate the bending moment. But this is for uh, sand, as, as we talked about uh, before. Now, for sand, actually, diffraction getting smaller because sand will increase friction angle getting smaller. Okay. Now, even though it looks like the, the magnitude is very small, but, but because the bridge support is much stiffer, uh, basically uh, carrying a lot of load to help the pile uh, to, to support the load. But that, reach to the concluding remark for my lecture. That I show you the experimental and the 3D numerical method were used to investigate the effect of skull holes on the response of the pile in sand and the, or clay. The skull depth is the most important influence factor. Okay? Skull hole dimension have a more effect on pile response in sand than in clay, as I explained to you. The stress history has an effect on the response of lateral load piles by increased OCR and reduce the undressure strength of clay, basically reduce the resistance, or increase the friction of sand, basically increase the resistance. Okay? The simplified method considers the effect of skull hole and stress history were developed and were, uh, their results were com well compact with numerical results. Now, design of pi group and the skull condition should consider three facts, skull hole dimension, stress history, and the group effect, okay? The last lay, uh, integrate analysis program for lateral behavior of pi support bridges and the skull condition were developed. The analysis results shows the skull reduced bridge lateral resistance, okay? And uh, also the soil stress history effect was limited because of the interactive effect of bridge structures, okay? So I'd like to thank um, my former students, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Ling and uh, another master's student, Omar, and uh, the, most of my presentation based on their work. And I also um, corroborate with my colleague, Dr. Burnett, Dr. Parson, Dr. Paul, and uh, Professor Liang from Tongji University, and uh, Dr. Li uh, uh, from Wuhan University of Technology. And, uh, most of the work was sponsored by the Kansas Department of Transportation. With that, thank you very much. So I just will go for some questions here. One okay. is from Mr. Maurya. The angle of internal friction is shown to be increasing for top layers of sand post score due to OCR effect. Whether the stress relief due to score would not have any effect. The effect of stress relief is asking. Uh, I, I, can you say again? I couldn't hear very clear. Yeah, okay. The angle of internal friction is shown to be increasing for top layers of sand mm -hmm. after post score. Will it not, the stress release effect, will it not have any effect? That's okay, I, I think I got the, the, uh, the friction angle effect uh, is uh, more yeah. important at the shallow depths. Okay, yeah. we're yeah. getting deeper, the overbound stress getting larger, the, the friction angle effect getting less and less. That's right, yeah. Okay. That's okay. also what we show in the, our example. Okay, uh, so the other issue you, you, you're uh, trying to clearly bring out uh, that the, uh, you know, the integrated effects in the integrated are completely slightly different from what is uh, considered for individual cases. 
why is it so of course is it a compensating or something because uh yeah i, I think that the, the reason because the bridge itself in in that model is very stiff very strong the the, the pile effect uh, in the overall for the lateral load um basically if you think about it, the top is fixed bottom is fixed and even though you remove the soil uh, the deformation will not change much you see what i'm saying the top of you fix into the bridge deck the bridge abutment the bottom you fix in the in the like we have a rock in the bottom and then if you even re remove the soil uh, kind of between um, the effect is not as significant as what we see uh, for the single pile or group pile without the bridge structures. Yeah, one last question. Actually, uh, all your findings are all codified or in a consolidated form because in India, we have a lot of issues on uh, uh, pile uh, design and score. You know, we have a lot of agencies. There's a lot of contradictions in codes and a uh, lot of inconsistencies cons required. Maybe your uh, codes uh, work based on your codes, maybe have for some use to us. Is it qualified or somewhere in years or something? You talk about the software we develop? No, not the software, you know, the findings that you did. Uh, in, uh, is it in the form of a, a consolidated report or something for bridge code or so that it can be used by regular practicing engineers? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we publish we publish quite a few papers. Yeah. And I, okay. I provide in the presentation, um, and also we we try to help the engineers this way develop a simplified method. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the simple okay. method, of course, is verified by numerical method. But we don't just <laughs> use, use numerical method. Actually, simplified yeah. method would be good for okay. practical applications. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.